Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media podcast. My name is Lori Clausen, and today we have an exceptional guest. Her name is Joanne. She happens to be a very good friend of mine because of social media. We met back many, many moons ago on, I think it was either Snapchat or Periscope. I can't recall exactly, but we've known each other for a really long time. She has her own online business that she's going to tell you all about, and she has some great little tidbits for you today, all about content marketing and how to use it for any type of small business owner, whether you are really comfortable with making content, whether you are not comfortable with making content, and anything in between. So welcome, Joanne. Go ahead and introduce yourself to those listening and or watching. I'm so happy to have you here today. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited. I love the topic of social media. Um, so I've been a professional organizer for 18 years, and I've been using social media marketing since I started Facebook probably back in 2008. So my business started in 2006. And then in 2008, I started using social media. Um, so I help women get organized uh, specifically with their information, with paper, digital, email, uh, project management, time management, and all of that. Uh, so women in business specifically. And yeah, I love it. That is so cool. So you had a very clear transition from pre-social media to mm the digital space. So I can't wait to get your perspective and some of your experiences. What are the main goals, in your opinion, of creating and distributing content on your social media platforms? Uh, so personally, for me, um, putting out content is education is huge. Um, but for me, a lot of it is creating trust, because what I do is such a personal thing. And I need people to trust me. There's so many, um, you know, websites out there and people out there that teach, you know, productivity hacks and organizing hacks and all of that. And I'm a big believer that, you know, cookie cutter systems don't work. So I want people to understand what they're going to get when they when they work with me, what what they're going to feel like and, you know, that I'm knowledgeable. So it's, you know, it's creating that education and also that trust at the same time. That makes so much sense because... I mean, I imagine that openly admitting that you are unorganized and you have challenges with that is not something that surfaces very easily. Like, yeah, so that's so important is building that trust factor. I love that you said that. How do you measure the effectiveness or the impact of your social content? And do you, um, do you use key metrics or tools of any kind? Or how do you measure... Like, how can you tell if it's working? Yeah, I, I love I loved when I saw this question. And I thought, I don't measure. <laughs> um, uh -huh. I, it's for, for me, it's a feeling. Um, and I, sh I shouldn't say I don't measure at all. Obviously, you know, I take a peek to see if anything's even, you know, reaching anybody. So maybe, you know, it's not even what I'm putting out there. It's where I'm putting it and how I'm putting it. I'll use Facebook for an example. If you put a link on your Facebook <clears throat> page, pretty much nobody sees it because Facebook's like, yeah, no, we're not sending you off to her site. We want you here. So that type of thing, I do measure and look at stuff like that, but I don't, I don't concern myself with likes and comments because I can tell you over the years, you know, I'll, I'll run into somebody, whether I run into somebody I know in my personal life or to run into somebody at a conference or just be talking to someone and they're like, oh yeah, I love that video you did on that. And I love that. But they never, you know, they never said anything about it, but people are watching. So you just have to, for me, it's always like people are watching, people are, you know, so for, you know, video is huge for me to put out a video and just know that even if, you know, the comments and likes aren't there, people are definitely, they're definitely watching on, on some place and in some level. What you just said tweaked a memory. And I believe the first time you really impacted me. You yeah. were very, very big on Periscope. And that was yeah. so easy for you to, I mean, ah. <laughs> the adapter too, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I started with Periscope in 2015, probably six months after they started. And I'll tell you the, I have a photo of the first time I ever, uh, I have a screen capture the first time I ever went live. 
And the look on my face says it all. I was terrified. I didn't do video. I was like, no, I didn't do recorded video. I didn't do live video. Okay. And I went in and I did it and it was scary and it was awful. And then I went in the next day and I did it and it was scary and it was awful and it was awful. And it was awful. And probably maybe two months in, 100% comfortable. I could hop right in, chat with people and, and be comfortable. Uh, what it did do was it made me uncomfortable doing recorded video because when you're live, you can mess up. You can say, you know, it doesn't matter. It's not like you know, structured video. So I had to retrain myself to do structured video, but Snapchat where <laughs> I think we really yes. met is helped me do that. Yeah. I, and I'm so glad that you talked about that because a lot of the um, small business owners that I work with and coach it, they're so afraid of video. And I always mm -hmm. say you can practice as much as you want, record, save it in draft, do whatever you have to do, just start practicing. And so for you to have, you know, gone that route on Periscope and, and gotten super comfortable with that, that's such a, a key um, takeaway, I think, because it's, yeah. it's, it works on any of the platforms, really. So next question, what are some best practice tips for creating engaging and relevant content for your target audience? Which that's such a, it's a bit of a, I don't know, trigger word or something, because it's it's hard, harder than ever, I think. But I'd love to hear mm -hmm. what you say about this. I struggle with this, I think, sometimes with the, with the engaging part, because I you know, I'm not the one that's going to be like doing anything fancy or, you know, there's not going to be, you know, any fancy editing. There's absolutely no dancing, even though, you know, I have that type of a personality, <laughs> but uh, through video, it's just grabbing people's attention with, you know, that problem or that issue that they have right away um, so that they want to want to continue to, to listen. I try to keep things short. Um, I'm very much about being succinct because I know for me, when people are not succinct, I just, I tune out. Um, mm -hmm. So, and then, you know, as far as doing like posts or pictures, for me, I always pull in a dog because that, I tell you, even when I worked with people in person, when somebody had a dog and they came to the door, that's what sold them on me because I, I wouldn't even talk to them. I'd be like talking to the puppy, right? So using <laughs> animal, <laughs> it's, it's interesting and trying to tie that in, but anyway, so we, you know, using the right words, that's been a struggle for me. So, but I've been working on it and I've had people help me with that. And, um, but video, you know, I think, I think video is, you know, I, I, I don't see it going away. People talk about, they're like, oh, videos die, you know, so short form video works the best for me. Just going to say like grabbing that, getting that hook. You know, finding mm -hmm. that hook is really, really important. It is so important and it needs to be tested because as I, like, I've just noticed this massive shift in the last few months. I mean, obviously we're in a new year and things, you know, feel fresh, clean slate and everything, but social media marketing in general has, has just shifted dramatically in terms of things like even influencer marketing, in my very humble opinion, I feel like it's starting to fade out and smaller creators are starting to take precedence. Now, is that going to become a cyclical thing? I'm not sure. Short form video matters. Long form video still matters. But the success of something like Twitch, people, they'll sit and they'll watch recordings or people on live for like hours upon hours upon hours so it's just you know what really it matters again in my opinion is that you practice like you do and and put content out there in a way that not only feels comfortable for you but you know your audience well enough that you know you're actually reaching them how do you balance the quality versus quantity debate that surrounds social media marketing content? Mm, yeah. So I went through a period that I started out 2023 super strong because I had had an excellent 2022 with my social media marketing. I actually had somebody helping me um, kind of lay out the topics and, you know, kind of the schedule because I really think this is important to know what you're going to be saying, even if it's just for the next week, um, so that you're not just kind of tossing stuff out here and there, um, <clears throat> which I tend to do when I don't have a focus. 
Um, so anyways, I started out 2023 really, really strong, but I was, I was posting, um, every single day on Instagram and I was taking those reels and I was putting them on shorts and I was putting them on TikTok and I was putting them on Pinterest. And so the creation wasn't bad, but I felt like I was just on overwhelm because it was like, oh, you need to be out there. You need to be out there. And and I, and I quickly realized that, you know what, it didn't change anything. It didn't change anything in my business. Now I'm sure people were watching and that was good, but all that stuff is still out there, especially, you know, the Pinterest stuff when it's, when it's on Pinterest, it just stays and it, you know, just keeps coming up and around. I think that I, I definitely believe quality over quantity for sure. I wasn't putting out anything bad quality, but I was like, oh, I got to make sure I make a post on this today. So I was like, what am I going to do? And sometimes I would just slap, slap something in there just to have it. So okay. yeah, I don't know. I think that, I think as long as you're consistent and whatever that consistency is, I, you know, I talk about this with my clients, you know, you don't have to be doing something every single day. If, if your consistency is once a week, you know, twice a week, every other week. I'm not sure on social media. I think you definitely need some sort of consistency on social media because if you disappear, people, for, you know, people forget about you. Although it's so flooded. I mean, I know, um, for example, on stories, I haven't been on Instagram stories. I've noticed. And you <laughs> noticed, but most people probably don't notice. <laughs> what I mean? And it's like, it's because it is, it's so filled at the top. You know, I actually finally went through all my stories the other day. I went through every single story. I just sat and listened to people. But yeah, and this is an interesting point, actually, now that I say that. I believe that people, if they keep their stories to like four or five at at a rolling time, unless you're doing something really special, watching some stories, there were people that had, you know, the the little lines were this small. And I was, I, I just was like, what, you know, what do you, that's a perfect example of quality over quantity, a sto- right. just within stories. I think people aren't succinct. They don't think about what they're going to say. They just start talking and then they keep, oh, I'm going to post this. I'm going to post this. I'm gonna post this. <laughs> people tune out, I think. I mean, at least I know I do. And I'm sure a lot of people do. I fully agree too. One um, tip that I heard recently, and I've actually tested this and I have found that it works now that we're talking about stories is that if you let your stories run out and then leave it for 24 hours or so and then Mm -hmm. post a new story your views like shoot right up skyrocket and I've tested Mm -hmm. it not only on my, my own account but with some of my clients and I've noticed it to be true so whether that's an actual tip or not or maybe it's just random coincidence I'm not sure I heard this from a like Instagram guru so I, mm-hmm. you know, I just mm-hmm. tested it for myself so that might be interesting a tip today but yeah, yeah it did work for me so you never know you might yeah use matter especially, you know, when you are on stories and using them to promote your business, maybe that's something you might want to try or implement. Now that we are on the topic of stories, um, how do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion for your social media content? And I know you touched on this a little bit already, but I'd love to hear a little bit of a deeper, like how you use emotion to, to serve people. To be honest, (laughs) I don't do this very well. And I know um, we have a mutual friend. I'm very excited for him to be on your podcast, Chad, uh, all about storytelling. Cause I say, I'm going to pull those stories out. Um, I can, I can tell story that I'm going to go back to Snapchat. I used to tell very intimate stories on Snapchat because it felt comfortable when we switched over into Instagram. It felt a little weird putting it, you know what I mean? It, it was like, you went from this kind of like private, but you know, huge community into this public space um so yeah so it's been it's been a little bit of a challenge i think that for me telling stories about my clients is a lot easier so i've been trying to do more of that as opposed to two and and i'm not saying getting too personal but even personal stories and it goes back to that hey i watched your thing there and i saw this there and it's like oh you were watching that like now i feel a little ooh, like i feel a little weird about that it just that doesn't feel comfortable to me. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think it, being able to use 
stories of clients, obviously without revealing any of their information unless they approve it. But um, that can be that can be really helpful um, for me, at least. I know personally, um, unless you know, unless I have a story that isn't so 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 personal, um, being able to tell that you're really good at that. Like I, lo I love your ability to actually tell those stories. Um, I, I always get envious of that because in person, I'm like that. And I feel yeah. like my my social media persona is a little bit more, it goes back to my accounting days where I'm more reserved than, you know? Yeah, it's interesting. Well, and I'm going to go back in history with you and back to our Snapchat days. The listeners and watchers of this episode Joanne used to be part of a small group of people where you were acting as characters on a weekly uh, basis. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I'm trying to remember your character's name, Windy. What was her name? Windy. You were the Apple weather. Bottom. Windy. Yes, Apple I was. Bottom. I was the weather. I was the meteorologist. <laughs> That's right. And yeah. You played that role deliciously, so beautifully. You had so much fun with that. I did. How, yeah. how can you, or do you think it would, is advantageous for those who are maybe a little bit more shy or introverted or nervous to mm. put on a role, put on a face in order to bring their business more forward using social media? Like, do you think that is something that could be helpful? Yeah. I mean, I've seen people do that successfully and I will have to say, like, I have to give credit to our, our editor for that because I don't think I could have created something. Well, although I used to do stuff on Snapchat with lenses, which is really easy because it's oh, not yeah. you, right? <laughs> but doing, Those doing playing a role and having it be my face, um, a lot of that was editing. <laughs> okay. um, but, you know, but you know, that, what I will say about that is that gave me, and this is what I would tell people, um, if you could ever do any kind of like improv training or something like that, um, that particular pro we call project, it was collaborative, people all over the world. Um, we had to come up with our own story every week and we had to film it. We just had to come up with a story and film it and then... Okay it would be edited for us, you know, and it's like, okay. And, and so it's like, a, you know, I might give something somewhat boring, but it would come out like magical and funny, you know? Um, but, you know, one thing that did help me with was actually filming and being um, on camera. Cause that I couldn't use, I mean, I did use Snapchat until I got yelled at. It's like, use your regular camera. Um, <laughs> so it was like unfiltered. I had to talk to the camera. I had to get that story out clearly and try to make it funny. A lot of um, learning process and it really like helped develop. But I've seen people do, like I love when people do things on social media where they, they play one role and then they, you know, they, they're either doing it with someone else or they're playing both roles. And I love that. Um, I don't have the, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think if you have that in you, that's a really good way to co get comfortable on video and to be able to tell a story without just sitting boringly, sitting to camera, you know, talking. Um, I, I think that that can be hugely beneficial for sure. One thing that has resonated while we've been talking is just the power of social media to connect. Like you and I have mm. known each other so very long because of social media and we are mm -hmm. genuinely friends while we haven't yet met in person I still feel you know you're one of my closer friends and I love that mm -hmm. and I think that you know one thing I do want to encourage small business owners who are using social media to market their business is it's not just about business it's about building relationships which you and I have mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. I think whatever <clears throat> content you do end up making yeah, you have to feel comfortable with it. I, you know, I never coach anybody to the point of you have to do this or else kind of thing. Like you have to right. find that, that comfortable middle line of what works for you while still maybe pushing yourself a little bit to try something new or test out different strategies or, or, you know, other things. So, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, like the reason why I, fell in love with social media in the first place was connection and yes 
that's happened through the evolution of content. And it's just, you know, if you think about it in, in all the positive aspects to it, it it's a really, really beautiful thing. So absolutely. But, absolutely. Uh, well, Joanne, thank you so much for joining us here today on Making Sense of Social Media. Remind everybody listening or watching where they can find you and how they can potentially work with you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was fun. Um, so my website is joannecarl.com. So it's Joanne with no E and then K-R-A-L-L.com. Um, I believe you can find me on all my socials there, but I'm pretty much Joanne Crawl everywhere on all the socials. And I'm on all of the socials. I know they say, you know, only pick a few, but I have I love social media. And I, of course, I focus, you know, my time on certain ones, but, you know, I'm there. I have content there, you know, if you want to learn more about me. I always tell people there's there you can you can learn a lot about people from their social media. So thanks again, Joanne. This has been super fun. Once you're finished listening to this podcast episode, definitely go ahead and check out Joanne's podcast, Permission to Be Messy. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching or listening to today's podcast episode. Just a reminder that my group coaching program called Marketing Mentor launches four times a year. I have the newest launch coming up on February the 1st. So if you're interested in being in a group setting of like-minded small business owners who are all going through the same issues when it comes to social media and digital marketing, I'm here to help and be that mentor for you. So go ahead and click on the link that you see in the description below. And I'm excited to have you come and join the Marketing Mentor family.